Welcome to the podcast that discusses storytelling from all angles to help you and us answer the call when the muse screams, tell the damn story. We'll be exploring the challenges of being creative in fiction, illustration, comics, film, and nonfiction. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tell the Damn Story. Recently, I was here doing a solo uh, episode while these two gentlemen, Alex Simmons, say hello. And the hey, one everybody. Only, I'm back. I'm back. And the one and only Tim Fielder. Hey. Stay. You two were out at um, a couple of cons causing some trouble. So um, it's appropriate <laughs> for us to talk to people about the pros and cons of cons. So, gentlemen, how'd you do? What was going on at the cons that you've gone to? I'll start off. I'll start off. Uh, the reason why it's useful to go to cons in this particular day and age uh, is primarily because uh, for most indie creators, it is the primary way in which you sell your books. It is the absolute 95% uh, of the way that you interface with your audience. So cons to me, and perhaps this is because I'm kind of the uh, a Rip Van Winkle uh, type comic book artist at this point, coming back into it, the climate here now absolutely demands that you attend cons. Could you explain to us what you mean by the climate here now? Uh, back in the day, there were not so many conventions. Okay. We have a convention mm -hmm. every few months, you know, maybe two or three a year. You know, now there's one almost every weekend. So um, you're saying the cons created the demand, or the demand created the cons? They fed each other. They're both. Okay. Uh, you actually have enough conventions going on now, where if you hit the right conventions, and your table is not blocked by the 501st Stormtrooper Legion, you can <laughs> tell your time. Which we love, by the way. I Which love, we love. They're nice guys. They're nice guys. New York Jedi. Those guys are great, man. But there's, there's so many of them. Jeez. Go ahead. That's why they call them the Legion. All right. So, um, uh, Tim, we're going to stay on you for one minute. Then, Alex, we're going to go to you with the same. Uh, you know what? Let me let me go to Alex first. Alex, why are cons necessary? We got Tim's answer. Oh, I, I, I mean, I agree. Well, I mean, first off, I agree with Tim. I agree with Tim. You know, it is definitely a way to meet your public. Uh, it's definitely a way to sell your product, your your books, or or whatever you're selling uh, immediately, and and get that 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 face time and and build your reputation and so forth. It's also a good way to network with other creators uh, for collaboration purposes or to share information or learn things. It's a, a good way to get around, you know, because I think you know writers and and illustrators. Really, we shouldn't spend so much time in our offices, our bedrooms, our basements, whatever. We need to get out and see the world so we can reflect it. It's definitely a positive place for networking. And if you're, you know, if you're indie, that's great. But also, if you're trying to break into the business and work for any other companies, going to conventions is a good way to meet them and show them your work. You know, maybe get a portfolio review or something along those lines. So I think cons are good for business. For business. Harder to do for writers, especially at a comic con. Maybe not a, a, a book con, but if we're going to talk about comic book cons, very hard for a writer to get um, a, uh, a professional to look at a portfolio or to look at a pitch. At least in my experience. Well, I mean, no Tell one's me if gonna, I'm wrong. Well, no one's, no one's going to sit there and read your book or your script or your story at the convention. That's not how it works. It, even back in the day that Tim was talking about, there's no time. Right. But what you do is you get business cards, you make those contacts, and you ask them in which way would they prefer that you send them your uh, samples of your work. And then some guys, I know uh, I know Tim has done it, I've done it, Don McGregor, a number of people I know have done it. You do ash cans. You've worked on a project with somebody. If you're a writer, you've worked on a, on a comic uh, sample uh, with uh, with some other illustrator, and you you print up these eight and a half by eleven folded in half little mini comics, and you hand those out. Now again, a lot of guys then and now don't want to be carrying a whole lot of stuff home from the cons, so they might say, "Look, you know, send it to me." But it's still a good thing to get yourself in front of people 
and, and pass out your business card or get their cards, get their contact information so that you can send them samples of your work, whether you're an illustrator or a writer. Nicely done. Nicely done. Um, mm. Give us a, uh, if you don't mind, a um, really positive experience, each of you, from um, the recent cons. Uh, well, Tim, oh. all right, I will, I will start it off. Positive experience, there's so many positive experiences, but the one that really reflects on me is, is uh, how I started uh, Diesel Funk. Uh, the, our first, you know, official day coming out was at the uh, Schomburg. Uh, mm -hmm. That was... It was the Schomburg Museum, right? Yes, it was Black Comic Book Day at Schomburg. Uh, and uh, it was, it, I always joke, I say, it was like uh, The Walking Dead, only the zombies didn't want to eat humans, they wanted comic books. <laughs> literally uh, assaulted by people who were there specifically to buy black comics. That's why I no longer feel that uh, after the most recent experience with Ekback and um, Black Comic Book Day, that black comic book conventions, I, I used to feel way back in the day, the late 90s, early 2000s, I had already gotten out of it, but when I saw him on the peripheral, I was like, okay, well, Black Comics is a limited audience. You know, even in the 90s, you had Black Expo. It was a limited audience, but now I no longer feel that way. I feel that we are here, we are there, and it's actually very organized. What uh, changed for you? Uh, well, Negroes read comic books, and we always have. <laughs> uh, yes, but <laughs> what, now you oh, thought it was a limited oh, audience, but oh, now you don't, so oh, what, what changed? Negroes read comic books and they read them all the time. And now there are there is is there is a long established history of black comic book conventions. I mean, heck, the Studio Museum of Harlem now has uh, uh, appears to be a comic book convention. So everybody's in it because what has happened right now is that geek nerd dork popular culture has now begun to supplant intellectual established culture. That the Marvel comics movies make more money and are seen by more people than, you know, uh, 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 art films. You know, they're seen in, in just as heavy a way. You have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that go to the conventions. And then you can see that Avengers 2 makes what 1.5 1.6 million dollars that that is the culture billion Tim. I'm sorry yes I'm a billion billion dollars sorry that is the popular that is the primary culture it's the primary way that people interface culture at this point so that's why black folks read comics black comic book conventions you want to get black comics go to a black comic book convention that's it okay then uh, let me let me just follow that up for a minute we'll get back to the pros and cons um, if you're if you're um, enthused about black comic cons these days, does does that mean that uh, black comic creators are marginalized at the bigger conventions, no. or is this is this helping their position? No, I I I I sell well at black comic book conventions, Atlantic City Comic Con. I I mean I don't know about anybody else, but I did well. <laughs> and that's that's just because of me as a person. I have, and I know we'll get into that. It's just the way I approach all comic book. Community. Well, well, very quickly because we're gonna we're gonna switch the same questions to Alex. But okay, how do you do very well at comic cons? Uh, I live by uh, one simple rule. Uh, well, two simple rules. The first rule is if the book doesn't exist, no one will buy it. Second rule is, if no one knows about the book, no one will buy it. So I, uh, in my, the core of my heart, I'm actually very shy. We However, can tell. Yes, you can't tell. <laughs> you can't tell because I'm acting. But what do... I'm acting. Okay, but what do you do at cons? I'm acting. Sales. I am acting. I am performing customer service. When a person comes up to my table, right, 
They don't have to come to my table. So my job is to do three things. One, treat them with respect. Two, entertain the hell out of them. And three, blow them away with my book. Okay. And then that exchange, I can't tell you my book is the type of thing where, and I'll make this very quick because I know we're going to get to it. My book is the type of thing where, you know, depending upon how it's worded, it could be a very hard sell. But if you are, if you respect the person who's in front of you, they'll give you your money just off your pitch. Okay, and that's uh, you're talking about Maddie's Rocket, of course. Yes. Yes. All right, Alex. Um, we have to go through a couple of quick questions with you. Number one, very quickly, a positive from your most recent cons. From my most recent cons. Okay. Um, and again, trying to do it quickly. Um, I had a gentleman come up to me at ECBOC. By the way, ECBOC is the East Coast Black Age of Comic Con uh, Comic Convention. So it's the East Coast Black Age of Comic Comic Con Conventions, um, and that's in Philadelphia. And I, I had a gentleman come up to me and say, uh, and he's very, very uh, sincere, very intensely sincere about this. He was telling me about how he bought uh, Blackjack uh, Blood and Honor, which is one of my my first graphic novels on on, on my character Blackjack, years ago. And how he enjoyed it so much that every now and then he would take it out and reread it, you know, to, to have that, that experience again and, to, and that enjoyment again. And over a number of years, uh, you know, he did this several times, and he was also raising a family. And eventually his uh, daughter uh, grew up, and she joined the military, and she joined in particular the Air Force, and was uh, eventually deployed overseas uh, to the Middle East. And, you know, great concern for the family and, of course, you know, the child. So, you know, he missed her and everything, and after a little while, he decided, you know, he just needed another boost. So he went to get the blackjack, and he was going to read it again, and he couldn't find it. And he realized, you know, darn, we've moved around over the past few years. I've lost it. I, you know, maybe I'll run into Mr. Simmons. Maybe I'll get another copy, whatever. So he's telling me all of this very intensely. And then he says, and then recently, you know, he was talking to his daughter on the phone from overseas, and, you know, and they're, they're sharing you know, and, and trying to connect and everything, and she's saying, you know, Dad, you got to send me some more comics. You know, I, I brought a bunch of them with me. I brought my Wonder Woman. I brought this. I brought that. I brought Blackjack. And the father goes, what? Wait, you have Blackjack? And she said, yeah, yeah. And, and, and she explained to him, you know, how it meant so much to, to her because of how much it meant to him and how he had shared that with her. And that was them connecting over that distance because he didn't know it had that, that sort of prominence or, or significance for her, and it had that significance for him. So they connected, and he's sharing this with me, and there's a very intense emotional moment as I'm getting this, and I'm realizing that something that, yeah, I put my heart and soul into it, but you never know how people are going to react, but something that I did my best on had that much of a profound effect on a family that he, was, he now felt compelled to come and share that with me and tell me that. And I was totally blown away and, and, and lost it, and there were tears, and it was all this other kind of stuff. You know, so that was an extremely powerful emotional moment for me and a blessing because, you know, you don't, you know why do cons? Because you can, you can meet people, and maybe one day you are blessed with a moment where you realize that whatever work you did, somebody really, really benefited from it. So that's, that's that was my most positive. All right, so now... Let's talk about um, people come past your table. This is, again, to, uh, for the readers and, and publishers out there, indie, indie publishers. Uh, they come past your table. They don't know Blackjack. How do you, um, how do you engage? How do you uh, get them involved or interested in your character? Well, I usually like to start with a flying tackle over the table onto them. You bring them down, and you pull their left arm. Oh, no, that's not what you want to hear. Okay, so so for me, um, you know, just like Tim was saying, you got to you got to engage people. You 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 cannot be that stone-faced, unapproachable, solemn-looking, dour-looking individual behind the table. That's that's a turnoff. Um, you you have to embrace them. So I tend to you know generate a conversation with them as, as soon as I can. Uh, it's You try and be genuine. I mean, yeah, they know you want them to buy your stuff, and you know that, but you've got to genuinely want to connect with the people. You've got to genuinely introduce them to your product. You've got to be as sincere and honest and brief as you can because you only have those moments. Um, 
and then once you're sharing that with them, if they don't, um, if they don't respond the way you want, you can't shut them down like that. You can't suddenly go, well, later for you. Uh, you you've got to remind yourself that you're out here and you want to be personable, and if they buy it, great, and if they don't, still be civil, still be personable, well, thank you, because maybe they'll come back. Maybe they want to walk around and look at other stuff, and, and, and maybe what you said is going to play in the back of their head, and before the show's over, they might show up back at your table. I've had that happen numerous times. Kids and adults, you know, thank you, I'm going to go away, or they well, thank yeah. you very much, yeah. and they're off, and then yeah. an hour or two later, suddenly they're back at your table and say, sure. you know, I want to pick this up, I want to pick this up. So Definitely. you know you you got to deal with rejection or you got to deal with what feels like rejection in in a professional way and in a in an open way. Thank you very much. Hey hey, well maybe next time. Great, have a good time at the show and just remain personable and open and and like Tim says, have fun and and you know do your best. And I think more often than not, that will pay pay you back in a, in many ways. If not financially, you'll right. slowly build up. Uh, better, uh, better pitch, and you might you know, actually build up a following. He's a nice guy. I think I'm going to go back and get his book. Yeah. Let me make a comment about that. Um, now, I prim primarily go to uh, book festivals and book cons um, uh, as a novelist. Um, I haven't done the comics uh, convention circuit in a while, um, but I'll tell you a story very quickly. Um, now, my very first book fair, there's a, an enormous, a very impressive uh, book fair in southern Jersey, in a place called Collinswood. Uh, it's called the Collinswood Book Fair. And basically, they take over Main Street for something like five or eight blocks, and it's just tables of different books. And uh, sometimes they're used books, but most of them are either... Um, small bookstores or independent publishers like myself. So the first time I went down there, I went down there by myself uh, and knew nothing about this fair. So I didn't bring a tent. I stood out in the August sun for the entire day, so this got very red. Uh, but a woman came up to me, and she wanted to know what the deal was, and I gave her my whole pitch, and she was nodding her head. And uh, her name is Denise, and she says, you know what? I'm going to buy your book because I want to support you. And it was my mm. single, it was my only sale of the day, and I'm still in touch with Denise, uh, a cherished, um, like, book friendship there, um, fan of the characters. This was for City of Woe. She also picked up City of Sin, and she contacts me every once in a while because I haven't put out uh, City of Pain yet. So, one sale, <laughs> and... Yeah, it's true. Uh, one sale, and I would say the best sale of my whole career so far because it has continued. And, uh, and I've gone back. Matter of fact, I go with three other writers now, so we kind of have a table, and it's it has grown in the experience. I also want to mention two other um, experiences uh, for um, new writers or developing writers. Sometimes it's a book fair or a con to sell Sometimes it's to learn. Uh, Manhattan features uh, Thriller Fest, which is um, oriented towards the thriller genre of books. And you have a lot of big names that come up, and they'll do about an hour on different topics. Uh, I've gone for a few years, and I've learned a, a, a tremendous amount from them. I think I'm ready to turn that corner and, and uh, get to a point where I'm either more involved or selling or something like that. They really don't have... Um, an area to sell for uh, independent publishers at the moment. Um, it's kind of a one central bookstore, but still, I think you know I've learned a lot from them. I'm ready to go to the next one. Similar, uh, the Writers Digest uh, um, convention, where there's tons to learn and networking and all that. Um, I think one of the things that um, I would still study more. And I still, you know, I buy books and study more on is the the art of networking. It's something that I think mm. that um, yes, it's a pro for cons, um, but it's a skill to always develop further. And uh, there was a guy. Um, if we had an hour and a half, I would remember the name. But at this time, at, at the time <laughs> that this happened, uh, he was the head of um, one of the editors at DC, and. Um, it was one of the many times that Aquaman had died, um, 
and I pitched him, <laughs> you know, and I and I pitched him an idea um, for Aquaman uh, to revitalize him, kind of as an environmentalist who was really supremely ticked off uh, at what humans were doing to the oceans. And all this guy kept doing was smiling at me and saying. Aquaman's dead, and I said, "Come on, come on! You, you, you know, and I know. We all know. Let's, you know, let's do some business." And he wouldn't crack. Uh, I'm sure if I had more experience, uh, better technique, or something at that time, you know, I could have gotten at least a better discussion. So it's it's a you slipped him a that, twenty, huh? What was that? You should have slipped him a twenty. Yeah, right. Slip him a twenty. <laughs> yep. Um, well, maybe that's a technique. Um, but let's talk about, let's switch a little bit. We're about halfway through. Let's talk, switch a little bit. Um, there are some, pro, uh, some pros, and we'll go back to the little advice at the end. But um, sometimes things don't go the way we plan them at cons. Um, let's talk about the oh. cons of cons. Uh, any mishaps you want to share, fellas? Uh, yeah, I'm, let, let me do... Oh, can, okay, Tim, go. Go ahead, Tim. All right. And, well, and by the way, what are you drawing, Tim? Because I can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in my own planetoid and not paying attention to what I'm doing. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh, um, Man, yeah, he's a, keeping it to himself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I am keeping it to myself, and I apologize about that. Let's go right <laughs> There, we're going to share that one. Okay. Yeah, I'm just drawing, just sketching, sketching out uh, inks and stuff for uh, for uh, your book, man, trying to get this God for a good book done. Anyway, but... Oh, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. Uh, so, so cons uh, of con there, Tim. Cons of cons without getting distracted here. Uh, sometimes, well, location is everything. Location is everything. You mean the table uh, that you're at? Oh, my God. Well, location is everything for me, meaning that there is a minimum minimal standard that you must have, and that is you must be seen by the audience. Uh, if you cannot, you have to make sure that you are as close to the audience as possible. That's the first thing. And I mentioned that because I did Big Apple Con, and uh, – you, the audience could not even see me because I was in the corner. Uh, and there was a poor guy next to me was behind a four-foot column, square column. So wow. you couldn't even see him. So, And there were, there were thousands of people there. So if I do the Big Apple Con and, and then people who conducted the event were very gracious, I would definitely have to be much more attentive to that. And like I said, this is a rookie mistake. Because even though I was in the comic book convention earlier, I really didn't do comic book conventions at all. Uh, so that's the first thing. In terms of another negative thing, uh, not every customer is the same. And I have a very boisterous style, and some people don't. They can't. I, I, I'm sorry, Tim. Tim, now, yeah. now I'm seeing the screen, but I'm not seeing you. Are you drawing while you're talking? Uh, well... What I'm doing is I, I've stopped drawing <laughs> for a second because I'm uh, <laughs> just, just trying to, to get my thoughts okay. out there. All but, right. um, no, it's good. Oh, okay. So then let us see you while you're talking. That's all. That was that. That's it. That's okay. it's more right. to see your face. Yeah. No. 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 I was just making my point. It's, it's I, I'm I'm emoting quite a bit actually while I'm talking. But uh, <laughs> what it is is that I am. Um, I. You just have to understand that, how should I say, not everybody is going to bite. And sure. you can't get discouraged. Uh, and to that end, I would say this, which doesn't quite answer your question, but it answers it to the extent that I need to answer it. Um, short of one convention, uh, all of my, I love going to conventions. I know a lot of people hate it. I love it. It's fun. It's fun. Beautiful. All so right. Attitude is something. Uh, attitude is for you, Alex. I was at this con. This happened a number of years ago. Uh, I was at this con. I was positioned near the autograph section of this particular convention. It's a big convention, and there was a number of celebrities over there. This particular celebrity in the comic book industry, uh, an artist, uh, had this huge line 
uh, of people waiting for his autograph, which they had to pay. They had to buy a ticket to get on this line. So they're on this line, and uh, there was this little boy I noticed in the line, uh, I don't know, maybe 12 years old or something around that age range. And he had his comic books and he had his tickets, so I know he you know, he paid to be on that line. There's maybe like uh, maybe like 24 people or, or, or 30 people in front of him, and he was just patiently waiting. And suddenly I noticed his mother, or at least who I thought it was his mother, this woman came running down the aisles, came up to him, whatever she said to him, they had to take off. You know, you could see he didn't want to leave the line because he was waiting, you know, he had his book, he had his ticket, but they had to go. And off they went down, down the aisles. I don't know, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes or so go by, the line keeps going, it ends, so maybe it's an hour or so, it ends. The guy, the, the celebrity, is talking to a couple of uh, buddies or cronies or whatever they are, but that's it. It's just the three of them standing there at the booth, and along the aisleway comes this kid running. He's got his comic. He's still got his ticket. He comes running up. He sees that the line's over. He sees the celebrity standing there talking to these two other men, and you can see the boy is, you know, he's... Timid, but but you know he's he's got his ticket. And he slowly walks up to him. You know he doesn't come running and screaming. He just you know politely walks up, and I hear him saying, you know, e excuse me, I'm I'm really sorry, and and, and I, I had my ticket, and he's showing the ticket. He said, uh, but I had to go. He said, but you know I had my ticket. If you could just sign this, please. I'm so sorry. And, and the celebrity turns and rips into this kid, basically yelling at him and telling him why are you into why are you bothering me. You're into, you know, just really just tore him verbally up. And there was a, several of us at our booths nearby. I mean, we, we wanted to go over the table and we wanted to grab this guy and we wanted to beat him into unconsciousness because it was totally unnecessary. And you see the boy, you know, slowly he, he backs off, you know, and, and the guy yells at him and then turns and goes back to talking to his cronies. And I watched this kid walk down the aisleway, walking away, you know, head down, shoulders slumped, and, and it, he stops after a few feet, and I can see from behind him, he rips the comic book up wow. and drops it on the floor and wow. walks away. Wow. And that image has never left me, and I still want to kick this dude's butt, and it's all these years later. I don't so, think you have to. You, you know, I don't. Think well, to. I still want to. I don't think you have to. That is, and I'm sorry, I'm interjecting here, Chris. Go for it, please. Uh, I, I that has brought back, and I've shared this with Alex, and will not share the name of this individual. The first time I ran into this comic book artist was 1976, and he was an absolute jerk. Mm -hmm. the second time mm. I met, I ran into him was at a signing. In 1988, he was an absolute jerk. So we got a person who jumped from 10 years, 12 years, and then when I saw him in the 90s, same thing. Absolutely unchanged. Yes, I'm a jerk. I'm a I'll jerk. say I'll say this. There is a um, there's a particular artist, legendary artist, who has a reputation for being um, a, a a very very much of a jerk, and. Um, I have been stopping by to see him with my one of my sons, who's a comic book fan, uh, since my son could barely see over the table. And um, I have to say, that guy has been kind to my son all five times. So we do have a lot of jerks. We do have... Um, uh, some that uh, you know can be surprising. The ad advice we're giving here is if you go to a con, don't put your ego first. Put the customers first. Well, I mean, there's that too, but also understand, and, and I think a lot of people don't get this, whether they're superstars or not. A fan is somebody who has seen your work and has made a, 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 an emotional or, or personal commitment to that work, attachment to that work. It means something to them. Maybe more than it means to you. And when they are standing before you, if they're being respectful and all, if they're standing before you, you have somebody who's standing there and, and you have that moment in their life to inspire right. them or make them, you know, just connect with them, just have a fun moment with them, give them a memory or, you know, whatever. There's no reason on the planet, I said, as long as they're respectful, there's no reason on the planet to destroy them. True. That is not what we're out here for. 
And so I think, you know, in terms of newbies going to a con as professionals or going there to sell your wares or whatever, just remember, if, if you really don't like to deal with the public, don't go. If you, if you really can't but you want to be out there, have somebody at the table, a friend, a relative, whomever, who can do that so that you don't put your foot in your mouth. You know, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let me get one other bit of advice. If you are at a con and um, you want to contribute professional to professional, do it just to contribute. Don't don't look at, um, you know, you're going to meet your hero or this or that because, again, it's always dangerous to meet your heroes. Uh, Alex, I'll tell the story. You were there for very quickly. We were in Chicago. You were debuting uh, Race Against Time, I believe, and I was there to help. Um, and one of the people who was uh, um, hosting the con, uh, came up to talk to you and uh, you asked how things were going and they mentioned that a particular uh, writers um, event uh, which was about 20 minutes away or maybe 10 minutes away had um, nobody in the booth waiting for him, nobody in the tent waiting for him. Um, I like this guy a lot, I really respected his writing so I kind of inserted, I said, excuse me, I said if you want I'll get him an audience this guy was okay so I went and just stopped people and said you know so and so is going to be speaking in in five minutes and I and I filled that place up for him and <laughs> I remember that and it was packed from nothing to packed and it was because I went up to people and told them this guy's gonna talk he's about to do this major and I do mean major, wink, wink, now it's a major movie, uh, title, and um, I was waiting for one of the host people to come to introduce him. Nobody came to introduce him. So I stood up and introduced him. And whether <laughs> I mispronounced his last name or this or that, when I turned to him to you know get out of the way for him to take the mic, he said two things. He says, one, I wanted an audience of kids. And two, something about um, uh, the way to pronounce his name properly. And I walked, I just walked to the back of the tent. I wanted to hear him speak. I, about 10, 15 minutes into it, he started taking questions. And I said, let me give him one more chance. And I asked him a question. He says, well, I'm not going to answer any of your questions. And I, I just walked away. And, yeah, you know, w Alex was kind enough to bring me to um, social events afterwards, and I saw him across the room. You know, I was going to go over and explain <laughs> that I wasn't an employee, I wasn't some peon, I was just trying to help. But he sneered at me from across the room, and I just said, don't, because, you know, the Bronx will come out and it'll be sloppy for everybody. And I, I didn't want to make things awkward for Alex, so I just kind of, you know. So beware, beware of meeting your um, your heroes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we are pretty close to the end of the show, gentlemen. Can we go and get maybe one or two brief pieces of advice for those uh, new writers, new creators, new artists? Uh, new inkers who are going into cons and trying to get some stuff done. What can you give them? What advice can you give them? Okay, I'll start. Uh, first thing you've got to do, and I will stop sharing here so I can come back here and uh, to, uh, talk directly into the camera. I don't know if anyone can see me there, but not yet. Here's the deal. <laughs> when you are a creator, whether you're trying to get work with a company or you're trying to sell your product, you are a salesperson. You are in sales. What you're selling is your work and you're selling yourself. You're an entertainer. Entertain. If you have any kind of issues uh, regarding you know, uh, being self-conscious, uh, being bald, being whatever for the length of time during that event you put that to the side put it to the side get over 
the trepidation of interfacing with your public, of interfacing with mm -hmm. your industry. Cool. Uh, and that is the most important thing I would say. All right, Alex. Okay, so I'll I'll just throw some practical things down. Uh, have a sign up sheet, sign in sheet. Get email addresses from uh, on your sure. table. Have email addresses from people, so you know you can contact them, keep them abreast of where you're going to be when your books or things are coming out. That sort of thing. It's a good way to build up a fan base. Uh, have some giveaways if you can. It can be something simple that you, you know, maybe you've got a, an eight by ten or eight and a half by eleven sheet. And you've got an image or something that's on there multiple times, and you can cut those up and give them away. Or, you know, so uh, giveaways are nice, little handout stickers, things like that. Uh, people find those cool if you can do that. Uh, make sure your signage at your table is clear and readable. You know, because they don't know who you are if you're a newbie, and even if you're, you know, a pseudo celebrity. You know, make sure your name is on the table or your your books and things are laid out in a way that people can see uh, what the titles are or how much you're you're asking for. That sort of thing, and I think maybe one more thing would be, especially if you you don't have a table, but you're trying to work the convention to make connections, have a business card or even a postcard. A lot of times, Staples uh, has a, a deal where you can get like 50 to 100 postcards uh, for 9.99 or 10 bucks, or you can have you know Vista Print or some of these others. You do a, a really good-looking business card, and you get 500 of them for 20 bucks. So you want to be able to easily hand something to someone and say, well, here, here's how you contact me or exchange cards. Those are things, as a business person, you want to do and have prepared because it's not just art. Uh, if you're trying to actually get jobs in this thing, then it's the business of art as well. All right. Um, I'll give you a little story about uh, my kid's book. This is a... Um young eight-year-old uh, detective and what we did was uh, what I did was I went to Party City and I got those little magnifying glasses and I attached them to a little mm. business card with a picture of Margaret Agnes Ferguson from the Ferguson Files and I walked around I guess this was the um, the major New York uh, convention at the Javits Center and I handed it to every age uh, of Comic -Con, yeah. and I Comic -Con, and I uh, just said, we're, I'm going to be speaking, we're going to be introducing this book at this time, and I told the mom, if there was a mom there, I asked, can I give this to them, and that kind of stuff, and I gave away a ton of them, and they, you know, they brought a nice, uh, nice bit of an audience, so that's one thing, and also, uh, be yourselves, look people in the eye, be glad to see them, you never know who your next audience is going to be, who your next customer is going to be, and you don't know when you're going to be meeting someone who is a long-term fan. So be glad to see each and every person. That's okay. If they walk away, that's fine. Uh, wish them a happy day because the next one's coming and the next one's coming. That's, what, that's how you work the story after you spent all that time telling the damn story. <laughs> if you want to hear more about the show or any of us, go to tellthedamnstory.com.